Okay, guys, this will be probably relatively short. What did I change for this test? Well, I put a little more width on the short side radius on the intake. And we'll take a look at what that did to the flows and the air speeds. Uh, our liquid flow still looks pretty good. It looks pretty good on the cylinder. I don't really think it's changed much. You can see it up on that ridge, and you can see a couple drips and drops on the chamber. Let's take a look at the bore. Okay, the bore is definitely looking better. You can see there's a little bit of an angle on that, which is what we want, actually. Okay, you can see down his throat. Looks good as far as our, our dicum. Don't really have much on the center of the cylinder side of the, the divider. But then again, remember, I haven't touched the chamber at all, and I'm still using the evaporation ridge valves, okay? Now, somebody asked about the throat ratio. Well, DV wants me to do a special uh, valve job on these. And uh, I can't, I can't just take the the throat ratio out because we have to get a, we have to get it done with the stock valves. Can we change the design of the valves? Sure. Let me put uh, one of the other valves up. Okay, big difference in the valves, right? One's got a big back cut and a different uh, face angle. And the stocker has just a, a huge 45 and an evaporation ridge on it. So I think maybe I, my next test will just be changing, changing the valves and see what we get. See how much that valve is worth. If I can rem remember what, uh, what I should do for the next test. And uh, on the exhaust, on the exhaust, all I did is I took my burr and I put a little bit of a radius on that throat cut. And then I blended it out with uh, a sand roll. And we'll see if that makes any difference on this. Now remember, still, okay, chamber hasn't been touched. This is the valve we're using. So let's take a look. Okay, this is our previous... This is where I neck the guide down quite a bit. And to be honest, I'm not completely thrilled with that pointy guide. I may still round it. I did, I did that on DV cylinder head chunk. And uh, not that it was a huge difference, but I like the rounded a little better because instead of telling the air where to go, it kind of lets the air go where it wants to go as far as your cylinder roof side. Just a uh, noise in my head talking right now, guys. Okay, so this is what we had. These are our swirls that we had. Now this, I widened up the short side radius, right? Because I wasn't thrilled about our short side radius speeds. So, okay, we got a plus, 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 plus equals, two minuses, plus, plus, plus. Overall, it puts us in the right direction, but it actually didn't really give us more peak because as you widen it, it also changes your air speeds, right? And our air speeds did not go down much, okay, versus what they were. They went down a little bit, but not nearly as much as I would have thought they would have. Now, when I change the chamber, that, that'll change a lot, so I don't want to do too much to these as far as development, I just want to do piece by piece and show you guys where the gains are. So making the the short side radius wider gave us some gains, but it wasn't uh, like a magic bullet or anything like I was really kind of hoping for. But let's take a look at our swirl. You got a plus, minus, equal, equal, equal. You know what? I should, I should let you know. Some of these were getting twitchy. I didn't realize it, but my... My optical sensor on my swirl meter got dirty, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't really reading that great. So these are kind of hit or miss, I guess. 
but this is what it is now and the swirl is actually quite low until you you start skipping off that short side radius and then the swirl goes nuts that'll also this will change quite a bit when we do the chamber and as far as the radius on the exhaust okay this is our last flows which were quite good let me put the pluses and minuses in here now the radius that I was able to use on that exhaust was not a big radius it's it's relatively small versus the 60 degree throat cut but this is what we got plus 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 we had noise we had noise here we have noise here plus 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 but the pluses are very small okay they're very small and then we got minus minus plus 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 and with the pipe at 500 Oh, I did it at 600 here. And a lot of my testing is going to be at 600 now because DV said he can make a 600 lift cam. Which which hurt my air speeds because it was already after I lost it on the short side radius. So I need to make it so the port doesn't start separating from the short side radius till after 600. We'll see how it, we'll see how it is at, with the other valves and after the chamber is done, and at that point, then I can do some adjusting of the air speeds. I mean the. Let's take a look. This wall here has not had a ton of metal removed, and it's a nice thick wall. You can really get a nice amount of volume on that. That really hasn't been taken out much. It's just kind of been shaped a little bit. Okay, so this port probably quite a bit smaller than the port on the DV chunk. Okay, let's go over our our pinch speeds down plus down. All right, not a big change, but remember it's already 600. 600 here we were 209.1, 600 here is 212. Not a big difference, okay? So you would think the air speeds are going to be pretty darn close. Center of the cylinder. Notice the difference here. This is this is kind of interesting, right? Center of the cylinder went down quite a bit, and the roof went down quite a bit. Because we added area to the short side radius. So what is that going to do? makes it easier for the air to go around the short side radius, right? So it's taking it's taking air speed away from the top. Now, if you do well and shape the chamber, you make it easier for the air to flow to the top and then around. Okay? Which will boost us up. And remember, we got to get this up quite a bit. I want to get these to 250 with that size valve, which is not going to be easy. <laughs> Okay, that's our short side. I got minus, minus, minus. We lost some speed on all of it because it's wider. Okay, take a look at the exhaust. The exhaust was decent, and it was flowing decent. But as soon as you put the radius on, you got plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. Only a couple minuses, so it's a step in the right direction. Now, somebody asked about our throat ratios. Right now, our intake is 85.3. Our exhaust is 86. So they're tight, and they're going to stay tight until they're finalized. Why? Well, how can I say that? If I make them too big for DV's valve job, they'll completely... They will not work, okay? So let's just leave it at that for now. Um, what else do I have to share with you guys? My friend Brian King sent me my plates for my bore adapter so we can actually get uh, much closer to what the 454,000 horsepower engine is going to be. I'm going to show you those guys. I'm going to show you those plates soon. He, You'll like it, I guarantee it. And uh, what else? I got the other valves for the W2 heads. So we got 208s, 
200 long Chevy style, 1130 seconds valves, and 1.625s, 11 30 second style, 200 long Chevy for the W2s. And somebody's going to say, those are going to be too tight. Well, they may be, but the valves that we wanted to get were not available in 1.6. And I told my supplier, I'm like, you know what, give me the 1.625s if I have to. I'm machining them down on my, on my uh, Su 2001 and we'll be good to go. I think they'll probably fit. Okay, I'm not totally thrilled with the pointy guide. I think I'm probably going to round that in a little bit of the future. You can still see, you know, the straight wall has got quite a bit of a bulge from the bolt boss still. But remember, that's just from my original deep bowl blend. Okay, these are not brought out to the size of the DV chunk or the DV chunk after Charlie worked on them even. But we're getting there a little bit step by step. I hope you guys are enjoying this, you know, figuring out where you get your gains. And, you know, the important point is, even though these pluses are small pluses, guess what? If you do a bunch of different modifications like this and get a small plus on each modification, they add up. Okay? So that's an important point. So I can't really think of anything else we got to talk about tonight. Oh, I do have one. I do have one thing. Guy relatively local, about an hour and a half away, has got a set of EQ Magnums. Brand new in the box, assembled heads. He'd like to like me to go through. And to be honest, I'm quite excited about it because. They're the old New Zealand castings. And I only did one of them at DV shop. I did a Chevy Vortec, and that thing turned out really nice. It was 275 on the intake, 200 on the exhaust. The only thing, the only mod they did before I ported it was they made it 20216. Three angle valve job. And uh, that was no development. That was go in there and what do you think it needs? That was one cut and on the bench, 275. Not bad. And I did that for Marvin, actually. Marvin was like, Charlie, I'm doing this, uh, these for a street engine. What do you think you could show me? So I took an hour or so, whatever it was. It was probably more than an hour. And, uh, and just, and I had zero Vortec experience. That was the first Vortec chamber ports I ever touched. And they turned out really well. So, I'm going to get to work on those. And he has an old cracked magnum head that we can use in comparison. So that'll be kind of cool, having them right next to each other and see which is which. Because I really like the magnum design. You know, these, these are good for what they are. In fact, I was doing some reading up today. And in, in a lot of instances, you're probably better off running a set of 318 heads worked up than a lot of the 360 stuff. Remember, the 360 stuff doesn't flow much more than that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I am going to say it was only, well, only like 220, right? 220 and 150, something like that. You guys can correct me, but remember, we're doing that with tiny valves. Think about that. Smaller port, tiny valves, same flow. What's that going to do to your torque curve? You guys can answer that in the questions. A lot of you guys know that right away. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'll take the smaller, faster port 99 times out of 100. Only certain applications do I want the much bigger, slower port. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.